So W is weight. And it is, I, t I have to take notes. And it is in kilograms. And H is the height in centimeters. OK. Uh, S is in square meters. Yes, we know that. Uh, use this information to for exercise 73 and 74. OK. So uh, assume that the patient's height is 170, so 170 centimeters. Uh, find the patient's approximate surface area, assuming that the weight is blah, blah, blah. So the calculations are identical, so choose one. What will be the weight? You want 70, 100, or 50, or make one up. Doesn't matter. Which one? Let's do 70. 70. Very good. So we decided to use 70 kilograms. Perfect. So we want to find the surface. All we have to do is just plug in the information. Height is uh, given to us 170. Uh, weight, we picked 70. And divide by 3,600. I'm going to share my screen with the calculator now. OK, so I will have the square root. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I was in table. So I have the square root. You know me already, I have to have parentheses. Uh, it's 170 multiplied by 70. Some calculators, like this one, the, the uh, simulator doesn't need parentheses. But you may have an older calculator. That's why I have to show parentheses. So be careful. So 3,600, because in some calculators, parentheses will pop up anyway, automatically, in the older versions. OK, so we have approximately 1.8181, uh, and that is in squared meters. Good. Moving on to R.3. Again, these are all reviews. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to share, but go to the book now. OK. OK, here we are reviewing a little bit of um, interval notation and function and domain and range. That's We already have done that. So let's just uh, review with some examples that you pick. OK, so here it is. Each graph um, is that of a function, a determine f of 1, domain, uh, all x values such that f of x is 2, and the range. So you choose the graph you like. Uh, let's work on that. Any graph. from uh, 21 through 32. Can we do 31? Yes, 31. Perfect. This is a step function. Good. 31 is good. Good. So uh, first of all, we are asked to find f of 1. When I'm asked to find f of 1, what am I given in this problem, in the question, I should say? I'm going to stop. Yes, yes. So assuming that this is the graph, I'll come back to the. Um, to the book in a second. Of course, I just made one up, right? So when x is 1, this is exactly what I'm told. Perfect. I have to draw vert or imagine that I draw a vertical line that is x equals 1. I see that it, it crosses the graph somewhere, and I will be reading the y value. So this is what I'm going to do, and now I'm going to share my screen. So when x is 1, right here, imagine that you draw a vertical line through x equals 1, and you will be reading only the full point. So x equals 1 crosses the graph. 
at this point, and I will go to the left and read the y value. So how much is exactly 1? Do you all agree that f of 1 is 1? Do I need to show it again? Don't be shy. OK, now the domain. OK, the domain is determined using vertical lines. So coming back, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Remember when I said here, how do I determine the range? I look and I cut, 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 cut. No, no. Empty. Yes, 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 yes. The same thing I do with the domain. Yes, 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 yes. That's exactly how I proceed with finding the domain. So back here. So from here till here, this with a bracket and this with a parenthesis. Because the function exists at every point. Every vertical line will hit the graph somewhere except here, if that's the case. So let me share again. So from negative 5, which is a full point, the function exists everywhere. If I draw vertical lines, it will hit the graph everywhere, only once. And I have to stop at 5. So therefore, can anyone give us a domain for this function? Not for this one, of course. Disregard this from the book. Is it negative infinity, negative 5? But we started at 5, at negative 5, right? There was nothing to the left. So uh, let, me, let me say this. Very good question. So if I have an arrow, then it will go to infinity. OK, there's no arrow. Okay. But there is no arrow. Yes, there is no arrow. Good. So let's go back and share again to see it. See, there is not, it's, it starts at negative 5. I cannot say, oh, I think it starts at negative infinity, as long as I don't, I mean, if I see that. So here, see, it stops. Full stop. They're all stopping somewhere. For some reason, I don't know why they did that. But we can look at the previous section in which you saw they were not stopping. If there is no stop, like a full stop like this, like a point, then I, I cannot um, um, you know, consider that it goes to infinity or negative infinity. So the first x value that I hit with vertical lines is negative 5. The last vertical, the, the last line, vertical line that will hit the graph is at 5, but it has to be with a parenthesis because it's an open point. So this is where that bracket versus parenthesis Exactly. Is. Yes. Now, can anyone uh, tell us, uh, I'm jumping, I'm, I didn't forget about C, but can anyone give us the range of this? Remember how I showed you about the range, what we need to do about the range. We start with negative infinity horizontal lines. No, no, no graph. What is the first value that I hit with horizontal lines? Negative 2 to how, to how, to what? 2. Right, but there are gaps in there. I cannot use an interval notation for this. I have to use braces. It's only negative 2. Only what? 0. You're jumping. Oh, negative 1. Negative 1, then 0. I agree. And then? 1. And then? Yeah. That's it. So let me share. I mean, stop sharing. This is how I have to write finite number of elements. I could never do this here because they're one next to the other. But here they're not. There is a gap. So the braces tell us that it has the range has one, two, three, four, five members. The set has only five elements, nothing in between. You understand that the interval zero, 0 to 1 has infinitely many values, many numbers. Infinite between 0 and 1. If this is 0 and this is 1, these are not countable. Infinite numbers between 0 and 1. But here, between negative 2 and 2, I only have 5. OK, uh, there was one more question there. 
and that was what? Uh, f of x equals 2. Okay, so for f of x equals 2, f of x equals 2 means y equals 2. So I have to draw a horizontal line, y equals 2, and then read the corresponding x values. So back to the original graph. It says f of x equals 2. So f of x equals 2 is this line. y equals 2. So how many x values do we have? Infinite between 3 with a bracket and 5 with a parenthesis. So I will say uh, y equals 2 for x in, we like to write in, there is a mathematical symbol, you don't have to bother with that, x in 3 comma 5. In other words, for any x value between 3 and 5, without 5, y will be 2, or f of that x will be 2. Do we understand this? Yes. Okay, so um, I did not manage to finish um, R.3, but um, please finish R.2 and you're going to have some homework, written assignment to turn in. So R.2 must be finished between now and September the 7th. And for those of you four or five, one, two, three, four, five, who did not do that R.1, you are, you must finish R.1 and R.2 by September the 7th. You do not have, I don't expect 100%, but I expect at least 65 to 70% minimum. Everyone who worked on it got 100%. Okay, and I'm very proud of you, and I'm, I, I'm very thankful. It's easier for me to uh, not to have to...